Hey, this is Tina Monk, the author of the Soap Making Handbook, Volume 1, and the creator of the eCourse Masterclass Advanced Soap Formulations, and they are available at my website, naturalsudsandmore.com. I am doing a series of videos just for the beginner soap maker, and they are just short videos, and there are about 20 of them total that will be in this series, so look out for the rest of them. In today's video, we're just going to go over soap making abbreviations, and I'm going to touch on a few terms that you will come across quite a bit in, um, in your soap making journey. So this is just to help you out and give you a base of um, things that you should need to know. So let's start with the soap making abbreviations. Um, of course, you're going to see these a lot. Uh, cold process, CP. Hot process, HP. Liquid soap, LS. Cold process liquid soap, CPLS, CPOP, cold process oven process. This is something that I do, the countertop fluid hot process method, and it is not for beginners. Um, that's way down the road for you. Okay, but it is uh, CTFHP or the FHP for fluid hot process. You're also going to see MP a lot, which stands for the melt and pour, and that is... If you're not familiar with melt and pour at all, it is a pre-made base that you basically just cut up, you melt it down, and then you add your colorant and your um, fragrance to it. There is a lot more that goes into melt and pour. I do not have any uh, videos on that, so I do refer people to the Soap Queen um, for the, the melt and pour videos. Room temperature cold process. This is also referred to as um, the heat transfer method. And this is where you use your hot lye to melt your oils down instead of melting your oils in the crock pot or another heat source. DOS is the dreaded orange spots. And those appear um, sometimes in soaps when the oils have gone rancid or things like that. And you're going to need to know about the material safety data sheet, especially with lye safety. Uh, SF is super fat. SAP is a saponification value. There's uh, a lot that goes into making uh, recipes and you need to know what the saponification values are and have an understanding of that. So I do not recommend that beginners get into all of that, but I just wanted you to be aware of the term. OHP is another way of saying CPOP, the oven hot process. And you're going to see EO and FO a lot, essential oil and fragrance oil. And KOH is potassium hydroxide, and that is for liquid soap. NaOH is sodium hydroxide, and that is what you're going to be using for your bar soaps. Okay, those are the two lyes that we use in soap making. GM, which you might see, goat's milk. PPO is something that I use a lot of. stands for per pound of oil because a lot of the additives and things that we use in soap making. Uh, there will be another video on additives as well too, but you're going to see the PPO a lot. SB, stick blender. OO is olive oil. People like to abbreviate the oils that they use. CO, coconut oil, palm oil, PO, and things like that. So let's just go over a few of the soap making terms. I'm going to kind of scroll through this kind of slowly so you can uh, stop and read it if you'd like to. Uh, you know, pause, whatever you need to do. Acceleration is something that you're going to see a lot of, and this re just refers to the soap batter thickening faster than expected. Um, some fragrance oils can cause acceleration, and so do beeswax, steric acid, and overusing the stick blender. And I will actually demonstrate that in uh, the trace video in this series. Of course, alkali is the lye that we use. Lye has a pH of 14, and that is at the top of the scale, and this is why it's very, very important that we practice lye safety always. Of course, in soap making, we have our acids and we have our base. The acids are the fatty acids in the oils that we use, and then the base is the lye that we use. Castile soap, um, typically it's just a olive oil soap, 100% olive oil. 
that is usually referred to as Castile soap. I know um, sometimes people don't stick to the one olive oil, but I did have a request for a Castile soap video, so I am not particularly fond of Castile soap, but I, uh, I will do one. And it's just a very, very long cure time for those, but I will do one um, shortly. Gold process is exactly what we're going to be doing in this beginner soap making series. And at the simplest, simplest uh, explanation of cold process, you're melting down your oils, you're adding your lye water to it, and you're mixing it up, and you're pouring it into the mold. There is no extra cooking involved. Cure time, which I have a whole video on uh, curing, so look for that one. I go into it uh, very in-depth, but cure time is what happens after you make the soap. Your soap needs to cure for four to six weeks at a minimum, and this is for cold process and hot process, okay? And it's not just the, the water leaving the soap. I know a lot of people think that it's just that, but it's not. Um, so there is uh, some crystalline structure change that happens during the curing process that makes the soap better and gives you a better lather and it makes it more mild. And there's just a lot of um, science going on there. So just wanted you to be aware of that. But there is a whole video that I do on curing. A lot of the store-bought soaps um, contain detergents or synthetic um, surfactants. So just be aware of that and the difference. Um, all soap is a surfactant, but the, there's the synthetic one and then the natural surfactants that we make. I do have a whole nother video on understanding superfat, but this um, is basically a lie discount. Okay, so this just means to reduce or use less than what you need. With a lye discounted recipe, you are using less lye than is actually needed to saponify the entire amount of oils used in your recipe. This ensures that the final soap product does not contain any free lye in case of, you know, any, you know, mismeasurements or anything like that. Maybe if your scale's off a little bit or maybe you added a little smidge too much, um, lye or something, the super fat is basically a buffer for you. Okay, and it also helps uh, your skin retain the moisture with the extra oils in the soap. The good amount for a lye discount is 5%, but uh, just it's going to vary on your recipe as well. Okay. And like uh, if you do a 100% coconut oil recipe, you are going to be upping your super fat a lot, 25, 20, 30, some, I don't know. I usually go with about 20, 25% coconut oil of super fat for the coconut oil recipe. And I had a lot of questions on discounting water, so I wanted to go over this one a little bit more. Okay, so this means that we are going to reduce or use less. And the water discount refers to using less water than the standard amount. Okay, um, full water, if you hear that term, that means it's 40% of the oil weight. Okay, and that's what we go by is the oil weight. So normally, um, I think the Brambleberry uh, lie calculator goes by 33 percent and that's where that's set at and that's 33 percent of your oil weight and that's normally about where I do my cold process my hot process water amounts are about 38 percent of the oil weight um, but I honest it honestly when you're first starting I don't recommend that you try a water discount um, I would recommend that you start with uh, 35 percent if um, lye needs its own weight and water to dissolve correctly. So I don't recommend when you're beginning that you try a water discount because it's 
going to make your soap trace faster and it's also a more concentrated solution. I just want you to focus on getting used to the process and how soap making works and get comfortable with that. After you've had quite a few uh, batches underneath your belt and then you feel like you want to experiment and try different things. I, I don't um, even do 25% water ever. Um, I, the only one that I did do that with was a hot process a countertop fluid hot process. It was a milk uh, soap. So I cooked with a low amount of water and then added the rest of the liquid after the cook, which was the milk. So, and in that video that uh, the soap volcanoed like crazy and it was harder to control. So a water discount is not really something beginners um, should be, try to mess with. I just want you to get used to the process. And just for um, clarification, the reason for discounting water is to produce a harder bar of soap faster, but um, just know that if you use less water, the soap will be harder sooner, but it does not mean that your soap cures faster, okay? And of course, the DOS, the abbreviation for dreaded orange spots. Essential oil is the volatile oil that has been obtained from a plant for its scent, flavor, or therapeutic property. And a lot of people use essential oils in their soaps. There is uh, a Brambleberry lye calculator that has, um, right next to their lye calculator button, is a fragrance calculator button. And that'll give you the correct percentages. I will go over um, that, the adding essential oils and fragrance oils in another video, because that needs more exploration explanation. Of course the fatty acids are what are in our oils and the fatty acid properties are what determine the properties that we end up in our soap. So just for an example, um, I do go into this way more in depth in my master class advanced soap formulations, um, but just like lauric acid is in coconut oil and what that brings to the soap is a cleansing property. Okay, and oleic acid, which is um, a very conditioning fatty acid, and that is very, you're going to see that in olive oil and um, some other liquid oils. And of course, fragrance oil. I, um, some people get confused about the fragrance oil and the differences between the fragrance oils and the essential oils. The essential oils we consider natural and the fragrance oils we consider synthetic. They are imitations of scents, basically. I do have another video that goes way into depth on uh, gel stage as well. But this is, it's not necessary for your soap to become soap, okay? So you do not have to gel. A lot of people don't. There's certain uh, soap recipes that I do not gel. And what this means, it's just the exothermic reaction that happens in your soap. It's natural. Your soap is going to heat up in cold process after you put it in the mold, and it's going to turn into what it looks kind of like Vaseline. And it's just, it looks like a gel. And that is actually the saponification process happening. And there's a lot more that goes into that, but I'm not going to go into it here. Just know that it's normal but it also isn't necessary. It just speeds up the saponification process. And um, if you don't want it to happen, there are certain steps you have to take and you have to keep your soap very cold to keep it from gelling. Glycerin is made naturally in the soap making process. And um, the store-bought soaps actually, um, they remove the glycerin and it is sold as a byproduct. So that's one of the the bonuses to handmade soap is that it has that natural um, emollient in there and humectant. So it keeps our skin softer and it doesn't strip our body of all the oils that it needs. Hot process is a method of soap making that requires external heat to speed up the process of saponification. So instead of putting it in the mold and letting it do its thing on its own, we force the whole gel in the crock pot or whatever else you're cooking it in. I do everything in the crock pot. 
a, a humectant, which uh, I just referred to, is a substance that attracts and aids absorption of moisture into the skin. The MSDS is the Material Safety Data Sheet, and uh, very, uh, very good advice is to have that on hand for the lie, so you know exactly how to deal with that. And the, if you have not gone over the lie safety video and the lie basics video, please start with those before you begin uh, soap making. And you're going to see the word natural used a lot, and we consider um, so natural, but there are things that we consider unnatural, anything that's synthetic. But however, this term is not regulated at all. It's not like if you said the word organic, which um, we can't have on our labels anyway. But that's another thing for not, not, not a beginner discussion. But this is um, just know that natural is not a regulated term and it's used very loosely but we try to keep away from synthetic things and colorants. And if you want a, like a completely natural soap, you're gonna be using natural colorants and essential oils instead of like uh, micas or some of the synthetic colorants. If it's really, really bright, it's gonna be synthetic. And um, so if you have any questions about that, um, just let me know. And if you need to, you know, stop the video if you want to um, take notes or anything like this. And of course, the ponification is you're going to need to know that word too. It's the chemical reaction between the alkali and the fat, or the, as referred to as the, the oil that we use. And this is what creates the soap. And sometimes you're going to come across um, C's, and this is what happens. Uh, sometimes a fragrance oil is usually, usually to blame for this. Um, sometimes pomace oil can do this to you too. It's uh, you get your soap in the pot, you start mixing it, and it just it it you get the soap on the stick, which I have down here too. And then you can't move it around. It's just it's hard. You can't do anything with it. It's seized on you. But you can use hot process to uh, save that. And yes, if you have soap, it's made with lye. Um, I do have another video on soda ash, um, so I'm not going to go into that one as much here. But just know that it's uh, it's normal. You're gonna you can get some white powdery stuff on top of your soap. It's completely harmless. It'll wash off. You can steam it. Um, you can spray with rubbing alcohol. But I go into that way more in depth in the soda ash video. And trace, you're going to see that a lot. It, I do go into uh, that. I have a whole video on the making of soap, and I actually overused my stick blender so I could show you the different stages of trace and how thick your soap can get. So I wanted to be able to demonstrate that for you because um, I'm a visual person, and I know a lot of people like to see it to understand it. And of course, um, unsaponifiables is something that you're going to need to know as well. This is a portion of the oils that cannot saponify or react with the lye, and they remain in their natural state in the soap. Unrefined shea butter is very high in unsaponifiables. So if you use um, the unrefined shea butter, just know that uh, and you're never going to exactly know what the fatty acids are unless you test them, test the, the butter yourself, which is nothing beginners need to worry about. So it is um, usually between 6 and 15 percent unsaponifiables. And it does kind of have a nutty aroma to it, um, but I, I love the unrefined shea butter. I use it a lot, but just know that if you don't want to use it at higher amounts in your recipe because of that.
All right, that's the end of this. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. If you would like something else explained, let me know. If there's a word that you think needs to be in here, uh, just let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.